Hey everyone, we're back for another episode of Ask GN, and as always, leave your comments below for questions for next week's episode. We skipped last week because I was in Taipei, Taiwan with Keegan, who's one of our camera operators, and we were working on Computex, which is a big show. If you have questions from Computex, leave them in this video, or just generally about the trip, uh, factories, all that stuff, and I'll try to get to it. But this video is brought to you by Enermax and their new LickMax Giant Open Loop Liquid Cooling Solution from Computex. Let's get into this thing. So the first question is from last week's Ask GN, and it is from Tepenguin. I don't know if Tepenguin represents the Linux community or not, but certainly a good fit. Tepenguin says, what do you think about the 1080 Ti rumors, and what strategy do you think will NVIDIA follow when deciding when to release it? So I guess in terms of the timeline and things like that. Uh, so first of all, the GTX 1080 has had a lot of fanfare behind it. I went to one of the NVIDIA uh, sort of low-key breakfast events at, type, at the Computex show, and you may have seen it streamed where Jensen just uh, sort of approached press about the 1080 and all the previous updates, basically recapped everything the last few months. So uh, I didn't get great information out of that event. It was just a recap, but the point of bringing it up is because they again pushed the 1080 very hard, and I, I think uh, NVIDIA is going to remain focused on the GTX 1080 for the time being. I have hair in my mouth. They're pushing the 1080 so much. It, it's a big card. They don't have a lot of competition at the high end right now. The Fury X is really not... There's more of a science experiment with HBM, not a competitor to the 1080. And because of that, I think the 1080 Ti uh, is still a good ways out. I, I mean, at least end of year, if then. It might be... I, I would suspect very late quarter four or next year in the first half. That would be kind of my suspicion. Now, that said, there's no official uh, release or information about a 1080 Ti ever being planned to exist. So it might not even happen at this point. We don't really know. Uh, but the 1080 Ti, it's unknown right now for sure if it'll have HBM, HBM2, or G5X, aka GDDR5X. Uh, I would certainly suspect either HBM2 or G5X but I'm not sure which. I will say the HBM2 yields are still really bad right now, and that would be part of the reason to delay, but the other one is just because they've got a good grip at the high end of the market, and it, it wouldn't really make a lot of sense for them, for NVIDIA, that is, to compete with themselves right now. So in terms of rumors on the release date, that would be my guess, is quarter four to first half of next year. In terms of rumors on specs, I don't really have any thoughts right now because none of the rumors are there's no reason for them to really be uh, believed one way or the other. We've seen reports of HBM2, we've seen reports of G5X, seen that it might be on a GP102 die, which is certainly possible, but we don't know anything about it yet officially, uh, so I'm not really going to speculate on the specifications at this time. Next question is from Al Ali Nuts Allen, <laughs> who says, Hey man, love the channel. My question is, if you have a closed window panel, Will it be more silent instead of a, an open window one talking about PC case, by the way? Uh, so I, I think the question is if you have a windowed side panel on your case versus a steel side panel with no window, I think that's the question, but correct me if it's not. Uh, if that is the question, no. A, any case with a window will, by nature of having a window, be louder, at least when I say that, I mean things like acrylic and sort of plastic windows that you find in most cases. Tempered glass, I'm not sure what the acoustic properties of that are, actually. That's, that's still kind of new to our lab. It's a big trend this year, so I'll be testing it. But in terms of what you find on most cases, anything that's acrylic or plastic is going to leak a lot more noise than a giant piece of steel with foam padding on it or something like that. Not every case has foam padding, but it's pretty popular. If you look at, for example, the Dark Base 900, which was just announced last week at Computex, that's got two options. One is tempered glass for $250 and some other features, or you get the steel panel for $200 without the, the other features. But basically, tempered glass versus steel. The steel panel has a sort of foam absorbing, sound absorbing material, and that, I guess, damping is the correct word in this instance. That would definitely keep more of the sound inside the case and, and prevent it from getting to your ears than. Uh, a glass or acrylic panel would. So uh, I think that answers the question pretty thoroughly, but let me know if not. Tech Joe's Populism says, and this was on, uh, I think this was in response to our sort of very 
uh, very casual does the GTX 1080 bottleneck on CPUs question from last video. So Tech Joe's Populism says, going off of what someone said on this comment thread but emphasizing do and will CPUs bottleneck the 1080 more, less, or the same on lower resolutions like 1080p versus 1440 or 2160 being uh, 4K in that instance. Will CPUs be more or less important as we go up to 4K uh, or are they just as important rendering frames? So a couple things to this question. Uh, first of all, the, anytime you lower resolution, you are reducing strain on the GPU. It doesn't matter the API. Just by nature of pushing fewer pixels, the GPU strain is lower. So in those instances, I, depending on what is sort of meant by the phrase CPU bottleneck, because there's a couple, couple of different meanings, but depending on what's meant, uh, certainly at 1080p, you would be more likely to see a 1080 and a 1070 and a 980 Ti hitting the same frame rate than at higher resolutions. And when they do hit the same frame rate like that, it means that there's a bottleneck either on the software side, uh, so some games may choke on CPU threads, or on the hardware side, uh, where the, the CPU is not keeping up with what the GPU demands. And in either that may be draw calls or something like that, DX11. But in either instance, uh, if you're hitting sort of an average FPS wall at 1080p, that would be something you could partially improve with the CPU. If you overclock it or get a different CPU or whatever, and that does depend a bit on the game. Now, at 1440 and 2160, or 4K as it is more commonly known, uh, it, it depends a bit on the API at all these resolutions. The CPU does work with every frame it renders, so the higher your FPS, the more work the CPU is going to be doing, just by nature of the, they, they kind of work in conjunction like that. Um, so there's always a good reason to have a CPU, kind of answering that part of the question. But uh, as you do push more pixels, it's more likely that the GPU will become a choke point. Uh, so I think that answers that one. The next question, Mint Barry Dunch says, from previous Ask, uh, or this is my note, this is my note from the previous, previous Ask GM. So this is from uh, three weeks ago now. Uh, the question was, at around 720, you mentioned 1400 to 1450 megahertz for a 980 Ti as high to sustain for the long term, meaning I, I said something about those frequencies being a fairly high overclock. Does that mean keeping my 980 Ti overclocked around there without touching the voltage at all will shorten its lifespan? Uh, so overclocking, the nature of overclocking, there is an inherent risk to shortening the lifespan of your product or to just killing it outright depending on sort of voltage and power and things like that. Generally, anytime you're increasing, and I did answer this in a comment, so I think we're clear there, but anytime you're increasing the power target on GPUs, so you'd say go from 100% to 120%, and then increase the voltage, there is a risk that the card's life will be shortened, and it is probably going to happen. But uh, as I said in my reply to this question in the, in the comments, there's really no good data out there because it's really hard to run that test. I mean, for us to to collect lifespan data on GPUs, the impact of overclocking versus uh, non-overclock GPU. The trouble you run into is you basically you need five to 10 benches running the exact same hardware just for parity, and then you have to run some of them overclocked and not for several years. So there's no good data on that. But generally the consensus is anytime you increase a voltage and power, you are threatening the life of the silicon it's not specced for it. It probably doesn't like it too much. Uh, silicon does like heat, and actually FinFET process does like voltage to some extent, which is something we'll talk about in a future review. But uh, generally, that is, that is a threat. Now, if you're keeping your overclock there without touching voltage, especially without touching even the power target, I really wouldn't worry about it. Uh, probably the, the impact will be not that noticeable in the in the scheme of things you'll likely replace the card before it's relevant uh, but if you're in, if you're touching the voltage and the power target then yeah it is a threat last i guess comment is from saracen gaming who said dude i've seen your vids a few times now remind people to subscribe for more content at the end because i forgot so many times lol only just subbed uh, so if you like this content, subscribe. <laughs> Patreon link in the post drill video. Remember to subscribe and also like and comment and, and uh, uh, there's a button, subscribe. Um, so yeah, thanks for watching. Subscribe as always. <laughs> I'll see you all next time.